Hey guys, alright, so, as always, everything I express is my own views and opinions. Except today, where I actually have written facts from the all-knowing Wikipedia, which is never wrong. So I'm just uh, shooting this video as a quick response. I had done a video about Mountain House, Backpackers Pantry, and FoodWise, about the dehydrated foods, and I did that video with, uh, with my friend. We were out in the woods and we said, hey, let's shoot this, like we're just gonna use it. In the process of the video, I stated while doing it that I was removing the oxygen absorber. Okay, I said this because this was stated on the packaging. When you read the back of the package, it says remove oxygen absorber. Uh, someone pointed out, hey, that's not an oxygen absorber, that's a desiccant. It absorbs moisture from the air. And I didn't really care enough to really know the difference. I was like, okay, yeah, sorry. So I noted it. Then somebody else said, no, it's actually an oxygen absorber. It removes the oxygen to prevent bacterial growth. And I said, okay, I... I don't know, I'll look into it. So I looked into it in the best way I know how while at work being paid to do my job Googling through the Wikipedia. So I'm going to talk about uh, two things, desiccates and oxygen absorbers or oxygen scavengers as they're appropriately known. Uh, all this information was from Wikipedia and here it is. I'm not going to read everything, I just highlighted. So a desiccate is a hygroscopic substance that induces or substitutes the state of dryness or desiccation in its vicinity, hence a desiccate. Essentially, it absorbs the moisture out of the air, uh, pulling those water molecules. A common desiccate is silica, or silica desiccate packet, which is normally inert and uh, non-toxic. see. The performance of any desiccate varies with temperature and both relative humidity and absolute humidity. So they're as effective as it can be. It's also affected by how much moisture is there and how much it can absorb. Hygroscopic cargo, so stuff that's already naturally going to absorb moisture, such as coffee, cocoa, various nuts and grains, are particularly susceptible to mold and rot when exposed to condensation and humidity because the shipping containers therefore take the precaution and that's why they use desiccants. They use it on stuff that naturally sucks in moisture and would then be moldy because of the condensation. That's where desiccants are most used. For the record, hygroscopy, hygroscopic is the ability of substance to attract and hold water molecules from the surrounding environment. This includes any, uh, like cellulose fiber, cotton paper, sugar, caramel, honey, glycerin, ethanol, methanol, diesel fuel, sulfuric acids, uh, methamphetamines, any, no, not, not any, many uh, fertilizer chemicals, zinc chloride, calcium chloride, potassium hydroxide, uh, and different salts. All those things suck moisture. So baking soda. It's not on the list, but obviously baking soda, you put it in your fridge to absorb moisture or you put it in uh, your gun safe to inhibit rust on the guns. Uh, this should be not confused with the opposite called humicants, which are used to humidify the air. That makes sense. Uh, the most common desiccate out there is silica. It's a granule, uh, porous form of silicon, silicon, not silicone, which is a synthetic material used for women's uh, breast implants, it's silicon as Silicon Valley, which is a naturally occurring element that's used in electronics. Um, but it's a byproduct of it. And it's naturally occurring, it's purified and turned into a granule form. Silica is a common, uh, commonly encountered in a bead form. Uh, it's been naturally around since 1640. And uh, it was used in World War One as a, 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 along with charcoal as a gas mask contain to absorb chemicals. In World War Two, it was used essentially for keeping penicillin dry and protecting military equipment. There's three kinds of it. You can go look at that. Uh, essentially, silica works because it has a high surface area around 800 cube million grams. I don't know science words there. What do I know? Uh, and it, essentially that surface area works to absorb the moisture 
uh, to know silica removes moisture through adsorption, um, as do the oxygen scavengers. Uh, the main idea is essentially it bonds to the surface. Absorption actually will pull a material in, like a sponge, into itself. Adsorption is uh, layering through the absorption of ions on top of there. I googled that as well. I'm not that smart, uh, but I am good looking. Um, cat litter, it's silica is used in cat litter, it's used in desiccates. Um, essentially, also, silica can be hazardous, though it's non-toxic, non-flammable, and non-reactive in stable stages and ordinary usage. Combined with uh, chlorine, trioxide, and a bunch of other stuff, it can be very dangerous. Interesting. As opposed to a desiccate, there's an oxygen scavenger, which is the O2 uh, thing that I was saying. It's an oxygen packet, which is what's used. I contacted um, Mountain House, Backpackers Pantry, and Foodwise. I sent them an email. They responded. They use oxygen absorbers, an oxygen packet, which essentially is it removes or decreases the level of oxygen in a package and is used to maintain the product's shelf life. So these are things that uh, to extend it, so to prevent oxidization of things. So the mechanism essentially is actually through absorption, through alkalis, uh, iron, and salt. Sometimes activated charcoal is used and they absorb other gases as well and they prevent products from uh, developing odors. Um, iron oxide is actually, the, or iron, is, iron oxide is the most common one. Um, but for it to work, there has to be a relative humidity of 65%. So you can't use a desiccate and an oxygen thing because there wouldn't be enough humidity uh, from the desiccate sucking that out. The oxygen absorber would not work. Uh, let's see. There are ferrous, so metal-based ones, uh, that uh, sometimes cause sulfur kind of odors and stuff. Uh, or aluminum compounds, and then there are non-ferrous ones like sodium hydro uh, hy hydrogen and carbon, or carbonates and citrates. Um, a big note, the most famous oxygen absorber that people know and use is hand warmers. They work uh, activated by, it uh, contains cellulose, iron, water, activated carbon to evenly distribute the heat. Uh, and it reserves uh, some water moisture in there and salt. And so um, they produce heat. They typically last from one hour to 10 hours. To note, uh, I found an article that was interesting that talks about people using it for hand warmers as oxygen scrubbers. And I'm just gonna read what it says here and I'll put the link on there, but it's interesting. It says a few people are recommending the use of hand warmers for oxygen absorption, theorizing the same ingre the ingredients are the same. However, this is akin to using a toilet plunger as a baseball bat. They're both wood. So yes, technically, it works somewhat the same, but not work as well. It's simply not meant for that. So uh, you can buy oxygen absorbers online. Um, they're a little pricey. If you're gonna use oxygen absorbers to preserve vegetables or freeze-dried goods, so Mountain House uh, freeze dries, uh, part of that process, I believe, is also using dry ice to displace oxygen, and then the oxygen absorber will uh, absorb any leftover um, free-floating molecules. So there is a difference. Uh, if you're going to do something, look into what you're preserving. So obviously, certain foods need less moisture. So jerky packets use desiccates because they want to stay free of moisture. Uh, food wise is using oxygen absorbers to remove oxygen so you can google that and look into it uh, try to use the right thing don't use hand warmers except to warm your hands so I my personal views and opinions this is a response to some people hope you guys appreciate it leave me questions comments and or concerns have a good night